One of the most epic moments in X-Men comics happened when Magneto ripped the adamantium coating off Wolverine's bones. It was a milestone not just for Logan, but for the entire story, as this was the moment he, and we fans, discovered that his claws weren't implanted by the Weapon X project, they were always part of his skeleton. So, what happened to Wolverine after losing his indestructible metal? Who was the wild Wolverine that showed up during this period? And how did he manage to get his humanity back? The iconic and fateful moment when Magneto rips the adamantium from Wolverine happens in one of the most famous X-Men sagas of the 90s, Fatal Attractions. Like in X-Men 97, Magneto used his powers to mess with Earth's magnetic field, and the X-Men tried to stop him. Wolverine, of course, went after Magneto and ended up taking the full brunt of his anger. Using his powers, Magneto forcefully ripped the adamantium from Logan's skeleton. The trauma was immense and nearly killed Wolverine before the X-Men could get him back to the mansion for serious medical treatment. His healing factor barely kept his body functioning after that, leaving him physically weak and unable to handle more pain or injuries. Even his senses were impaired due to the massive damage he suffered, turning him into little more than a normal man after Magneto's attack. To make things worse, Logan realized for the first time in almost 100 years that his claws were actually bone and a natural part of his mutation, not something implanted by Weapon X. But he couldn't use them because his healing factor couldn't close the cuts they made and he would end up bleeding out if he tried. Feeling too weak to stay on the team, Wolverine left the X-Men in the middle of the night, searching for a new place in the Savage Land. During this time, he got into several battles, even having his claws broken. He soon believed his healing factor just wouldn't kick in this time, and his days were numbered. He grew weaker as his immune system collapsed under the stress of his injuries. He visited the graves of Silver Fox and Mariko Yashida to say goodbye, arranged for James Hudson to be the executor of his estate, and spoke with his adopted daughter, Amiko, asking Yukio and the Silver Samurai to look after her as a debt of honor. Despite his pessimism, Wolverine's healing factor kicked back in full force, regenerating his lost claws and restoring his powers better than ever. Wolverine then returned to the X-Men, but it quickly became clear that not only were his powers getting stronger, but so were his animal instincts and impulses. Logan regressed into a kind of wild man, living in the forest behind the Xavier mansion, barely interacting with his fellow X-Men. During this period, he was captured by Genesis, who aimed to restore the adamantium in Wolverine's skeleton and reprogram him to serve as the first horseman of Apocalypse and a leader of the Dark Riders, Lord Death. Genesis's efforts failed though, as Logan violently rejected the brainwashing implants and the adamantium bonding, accelerating his regression. Wolverine maintained his consciousness long enough to massacre Genesis and all his Dark Riders, but afterward, he simply regressed to being completely feral and fled into the wilderness. The X-Men managed to track him down and bring Logan back to the mansion, where he slowly began to emerge from his bestial state and regain his humanity. He received help in this endeavor from an unexpected source, Elektra, the ninja assassin and former lover of Daredevil. Her mentor, Stick, saw Logan as a potential member of his order, the Chaste, for his great spirit and decades of fighting against their sworn enemy, the Hand. He sent Elektra to help Wolverine find his way, and she began training Logan in martial arts to help him access his human spirit again. She proved to be a great help to Wolverine and a true friend. After this long journey to recover his humanity and stop being a beast, Wolverine got a chance to take revenge on Magneto. The Master of Magnetism had returned, launching another of his outrageous schemes, threatening the stability of the planet's atmosphere and the entire electromagnetic field unless the United Nations conceded to his demands for a properly recognized mutant homeland. The X-Men did their best to thwart his actions, and Magneto's clone, Joseph, sacrificed his life to undo the damage caused by Magnus's powers. But in the end, the UN capitulated to Magneto's demands, and transferred sovereignty of the island of Genosha to him. Wolverine nearly went berserk with rage during the X-Men's battle with Magneto. And after the UN's decision, Xavier had to forcibly put Logan to sleep to prevent him from executing Magneto on the spot. Later, Logan was captured and taken to Apocalypse's lair, where he was forced into a one-on-one -on -one fight with Sabretooth. 
and Sabah Nur had decreed that one of them would receive enhancements to become the next horseman of death. Reasoning that he couldn't let Creed become more powerful and dangerous than he already was, Wolverine savagely defeated his opponent and won the trial, hoping he could somehow contain his actions and hopefully overcome the brainwashing if he became the horseman. Apocalypse then arranged for the adamantium recently installed in Sabretooth's skeleton to be extracted and bonded to Wolverine's bones, thus restoring his adamantium claws and unbreakable skeleton. He was then brainwashed and became the Horseman of Death. But with the help of Psylocke's telepathy, his friends reminded Logan of everything he meant to them and managed to break Apocalypse's conditioning, restoring Wolverine's true personality.